can edit that. I can edit that. How's it going, everyone? Tim here, TRD Adventures. Hope everyone's on wall there. As always, thanks for tuning in. Much, much appreciated. So we've been going over some refresh videos of the comp tracks. So far, we've gone over uh, class one, class two, and now the most anxious class three in existence, G-Brook. That's just the funnest little part of this whole build. So yes, here is Money Pit, aka G-Brook. Now this build, I started immediately um, after nationals, if not before nationals, some of these parts were getting made before nationals. Um, so I knew after nationals, my class three was going to see the most significant changes. I had the most plans for class three overall. Um, a couple different reasons after nationals, you know, I've said before my plan for C3 was to make a true 2.2 tire class three rig. Now, yes, for scale nationals, I did not have to run two, two tires. I ran on four, seven, fives and for circa, that is still currently legal. But for the next few upcoming events I have, King Missouri Crawl Palooza, a 2.2 tire, 5.2 uh, inch minimal tall is required for the next few events. So I knew I needed to go true 2.2 for those next few events. I wanted to make sure I have the 2.2 truck built and plenty of drive time on it before then. And I knew the 2.2 tires um, would not fit on my current class three. In turn, I know because I've tried. So I knew I needed to get a little width out of this. So we address that with some axle changes. We'll get to those um, here just shortly. First, on to the body here. Uh, so this whole thing has been an absolute blast of a build. And it has tested me a lot of handmade stuff. Um, it is not pretty by any means. Solid 10 footer. But I'm happy. Um, this is definitely one of the most extensive builds I've personally done. Um, with a full custom bed here and modifying some of the body here. Um, for me, it was definitely something different but i think it's came out okay and i'm definitely learning from it so first off here what did i make i made a bug truck we took a to me a sand scorcher body we cut it in half put it on there and then we made a truck bed for it now i'd actually started this body uh, before nationals i'd already had the sand scorcher cut it in half and i was already making parts of it it was going to be a new class two body um but when I started thinking back and forth, I was like, my class two already has a good hard body on it. It's already pointed out. I had no clearance issues or anything with my class two setup. Now, class three, on the other hand, you know, it was, it was tight getting those 50 points. I got them. Well, actually I didn't because I messed up my sliders, but I could have got the 50 points. It was possible, but I knew with some of the other changes I was doing, I was going to lose some scale points and I wanted to kind of, okay, let's fix that up a little bit, maybe a little bit of leeway. So the easy way to do that was go hard body on class three um, with a drop bed. And that's gonna be 15 points right off the bat. So 15 points for just this body versus the zero points for the Lexan body that I was running. So right there, that's a 15 point jump towards the 50 I need for class three for a standard event. Took the, to me, a sand scorcher body, I cut it in half. Um, then from the inside, I traced out on some styrene, um, cut out a section, got it um, secured inside there for, you know, a back back of the cab, um, used some epoxy and some CA glue, uh, your standard styrene working material, stuff like that. And then got the body fitment, everything right here where I wanted the body to be uh, forward enough, back enough where everything's going to clear. Um, I wanted to make sure I was just past here on this front bumper with the grill assembly. So got my body location fit and secured and we were good and then i was putting everything together right height wise and everything i just already thrown some some v3 sliders back on it um and the cab set perfectly on the v3 sliders um just enough like literally on top so like 
definitely helps for that under support. Like if something crushed comes down on it or it lands on its roof. So I was like, okay, that's going to be very important as far as my overall strength. Uh, so I had thrown print me some green ones out. And then I think you saw me do it on the live stream. I got them bolted up, put the body on, traced out with a Sharpie on the outside edge of the body and just cut all the excess of the sliders off. So um, it is pretty well flushed there. They're not sticking out or anything like that. It's very crude, but it works. Front half's in. Next up, I knew I wanted to do a bed. I knew I wanted the bed to count as a hard body and I wanted it to have the drop bed points as well. So we grabbed some 060 styrene, which is the minimum thickness uh, to count as a hard body and went to work. Now, during this process, I did go through quite a bit of styrene between cutting, um, fitting, taking back off, changing, and going on. I went through quite a bit of styrene, but in the end, um, it worked. Again, not the prettiest, not my comfort zone, not my strong point as far as scratch building or stuff like that, but it worked in the end, and, you know, solid 10-footer didn't come out too terrible. I was building the bed. I knew I needed to start with the sides because I needed to pay attention to the dovetail rule it, where in regards to the back half of the cab. It's, it still needed to be half width of the cab. So just from the outside of frame rail to outside of frame rail, it was not wide enough. So I knew I had to build on the outside of the frame rail. So I actually did um, two sides, an inside and outside, identical. Um, and I put one on each side of the frame rail. Uh, one helped for a little bit of strength and also helped with the get the width and everything like that. So I got the sides mounted, um, cut out and shaped the way I wanted wanted them to and then put them along the chassis here i wanted to make sure i could still just use my links easily and get to my bumper and the shock towers and then i drilled and bolted the two pieces together just to, again for strength and security and then i actually bolted them to the chassis marked where i wanted some bolts for security drilled through the styrene and the chassis got them bolted bedside's done uh next up there I knew I wanted to have a drop bed. I wanted to make sure it was it deep enough all the way around. One thing I had to address was rear servo. Since I am rear wheel steer, I do have a servo coming up through there. And I didn't want to just have a hole in the bed where the servo comes up. So I used styrene and I made a box and made, turned that box into a fuel cell. So it's all open um, underneath it here. So the servo can come up and through. You don't see it from the top side. And the servo can come up all the way through, not worry about hitting anything. So boom. That worked. Covered the servo and gave me a non-functional scale point. So then I just had to go from the front of that fuel cell to the front of the um, bed area here that I made and cut out a piece of styrene to those dimensions and lowered it down to my drop bed depth, and got it mounted up and secured and all good. Um, like I said, it took me a little bit, and but in the end, everything worked. Um, like I said, strength-wise, I did bolt these together just to make sure everything's good. And then I used a chassis spacer here um, in the rear, again, just for the extra strength. Just make sure the bed is able to take some hits, make sure it's able to take some tumbles. I had all that done, and then I was like, you know, it's still just a little bit too open here. You know, just for some looks, I was like, I think I have some fenders. So I had some Lexan inner fenders from, I think it was a RC four-wheel drive, probably from the 4Runner. So then I just used them and cut out um, shapes and size that I wanted and then bolted them to the chassis. Now, obviously, they're not going to cover the tire, but you get the looks and the gist of it. And I think it just, you know, adds just enough to it. So that previous bumper that I had on there stuck out quite a bit just to help with the mortician body and mounting. But I knew I, I wanted to bring that rear bumper in. So again, took some RC fab tabs. I've uh, got them secured to the chassis. I was like, okay, I'll just grab some of the 316th rod and we'll weld some up at work. Um, while I was in the midst of that, I'm just rummaging through things and I actually found um, a chassis spacer. I think it was a 71 or 72 millimeter chassis spacer. And I was just like, that's pretty close. And it fit in between the tabs. And it was already pre-threaded, so I just went through the tabs and bolted the chassis spacer in there. And the chassis spacer is aluminum. The tabs are metal too, so that counts as a metal bumper. Simple to make, low profile, nice. Everything's there, not worrying about anything hanging up there. So mission accomplished and super easy. Once we got everything mounted up, went ahead, got everything painted, um, got metal roof racks on there exhaust we did the purple carbon fiber wrap there i'm um, on the hood again and we picked purple for a reason um the first part i already had planned for the new c3 build were the wheels and the color so my entire c3 build were based off these beautiful super shafty v1 2.2 wheels in purple uh we known the purple um color was coming and i was like that purple I need two two wheels. That is what we're going to get for the class three. And these are awesome. They're narrow, um, offset, and everything's going to help also just keep trying to bring everything in because I still don't want to go super crazy wild in class three, but I want to make sure I have all my clearances. 
and I didn't even plan on this, but uh, Earl's RC lanyard, um, which I are used for my remote control straps and stuff like that, um, had, was sending me some stuff um, with some new colors. And he had actually sent me purple and black. Um, so perfection. As soon as everything was done, I also have a matching remote strap for it. So super excited about those. So moving on, once we got the body and everything done, um, the next thing here was on the you know, inside the cap. So I wanted to get somewhat of an interior or interior cover done. Um, so I did just throw together some styrene and some foam, threw together a dash, some seats and a floorboard and called it good. Um, it's not the prettiest, it's not super awesome, uh, but for the, again, the next couple of events, points aren't a thing. I just have to make sure it's covered and that serves as its cover. Uh, but also I am super, super tight for space inside of here. I wasn't exactly thinking all the way through when I cut the cab so short, I probably, if I did it again, I would probably just extend it out a little bit and then uh, do it. Moving on down, um, next things will be wheels and tires. We've seen the, the V1s will be the wheels I'm using. Uh, tires, I am getting some custom cut and shunt um, Hyraxes made. Um, they will be a 2.2 Hyrax um, and they will be 5.2 inches tall. So there are 1.9 Hyraxes that are being made into 2.2 tires. Um, and then some foams to accommodate for those. Super excited for those. Uh, Theron has a set of them, and I did put them on this last weekend just for some runs, um, and they were amazing. That The actual 2-2 tires made a world of a difference on this truck, and I probably should have swapped those on before we did the cash comp. So that was on me for not my best C3 performance. But, but the next up, the next big changes on the C3 were the axles. Like I said, I knew I wanted to go wider on the axles. So we went with capper axles. Um, these are the Super Shafty CP44 axles. Um, they are beautiful. These are in gunmetal gray. Uh, they're also in silver and black. Um, now these are a capra axle. Um, they accept all capra components, internals, and stuff like that. The kicker here with the CP44s um, is they have a 20 degree caster built in versus the stock I think is 5% or 8% caster built in. So that increase in caster helps tremendously with the turning race, which is especially important. Um, one, being a portal axle, having that turning race, and two, C3, turning is key. Four wheel steer and everything. You need all the turning you can. Um, I mean, any comp situation, generally, you need all the steering you can get. And that caster increase is huge. Um, I could definitely tell um, where that came into play versus other capper axles that I've ran before. So we got all the capper axles in. I'd already had all most of the components to build two steering capper axles. So started building all those, getting everything done. Um, we have the stock um, gear ratio, portal gear ratio in the rear. And in the front, we have the Team Garage Hack mild overdrive gears, which equates to 36% overdrive. So plenty of overdrive in the front. And again, also that overdrive is gonna increase that steering even more than as far as knuckles and stuff. I said, me and the kiddo, we've ran Capras and 10.3s quite a bit, at least those axles. So um, I had some extra aluminum knuckles for the rear, so we got those bolted on. And in the front, I had some uh, Trio brass knuckles that I had here. Um, got those installed, everything there has worked great. The one thing during all of this, I'm starting putting everything together, I did not order were two capper steering links. During all that I missed and I'm putting everything together, I'm getting servos mounted up and I'm like, I don't have steering links and we are doing a comp the next day, basically. Um, so I was like, crap. So I started looking around um, and I couldn't tell you what these are, or where they are from, uh, but I had two sets of capper steering links in my drawer. I'm assuming from some point in time when me and the kiddo were both running cappers, I had ordered uh, just some steering links uh, for whatever reason, and they were there, and they were. But I am getting new links, new steering links ordered. So in regards to changing to capper axles, um, one thing I mentioned in the beginning of the video was I knew I was going to lose some points with these changes. And those points lost because I was going to go from chassis mounted servo to axle mounted servo in the front. The rear is already axle mounted servo. I told myself we're going axle mounted servo. And that's simply axle mounted servos just perform better. So without the chassis mounted servo, I knew I was losing five points from the build. And that was another reason for moving on to hard body and stuff like that was to make up for some of that points difference. Um, so just like that with the hard body and a few other things, the truck's already right back to 50 points um, where it should be. So good there. Don't have to worry about points or anything like that. Now, fitting the axles, 
you know, the rear was already four linked. That's all good. The rear, I unbolted the axle that I had on it, bolted this one up, and it was perfectly fine. Now the front, again, so I had to, so going from three link to four link, but also I have the VFD in there and the VFD where it sets, I worked on getting the VFD to fit for quite some time um, before I finally just called in the towel. When I started changing the axles and needing to move things around, things weren't cooperating. So what I ended up doing was swapping the uh, transmissions from the C1 to the C3 and vice versa. So I took the VFD out of here, put it in my class one. And then, so then I took the Ford motor mount and the 0% Team Grotchak transmission out of the C1 and put it in here and got everything fit and fit much better and actually gained quite a bit of clearance. So both of them still also have their transfer case points. The C1 is chassis mounted servo like it has to be. So I had the room to manipulate and move the VFD where I wanted to. And then here that the transfer case is small enough and low profile enough off to the side. I gained quite a bit more room, which actually helped me for battery fitment and electronics and stuff like that. So it ended up being the better choice. The VFD is still obviously a solid transmission. I was just having fitment issues in here. So we made a switch. Not a big deal. Both trucks worked. Everything was fine. Like I said, long process. This was an absolute fun build and still going. Still waiting on a few pieces here and there, uh, but it has came along and it is a blast. I am super excited for this build. I know on the live stream and stuff, people have been commented on and stuff like that. It seems to be going over really well. So again, really appreciate all the feedback. You know, it, it's not pretty. And if it was pretty, it wouldn't be mine. So that's just kind of how I'm rolling with everything. You know, I, I can put the ugly into the builds and I'm perfectly fine with it. There will be more to come on the C3 and we'll probably see as soon as I get the tires and the last few pieces, we'll probably see those pop up during a live stream or an update video, stuff like that. But in the meantime, this truck has been an absolute blast and it is a whole new monster now. Um, like I said before, I had the mullet set up. I had portal rear straight front, which is a great setup and it did not let me down. It was a fantastic setup and the truck's overall performance was fantastic. But Knowing these next few major events that I had to go to, knowing that I'm going to have to change my tire size and stuff like that, the truck needed to change. I knew I wanted to make a true 2-2 class 3 truck, and I see the benefits. I mean, I saw the benefits at nationals, and I've seen the benefits at local comps in class 3. The tire size makes a world of a difference, and for the old, the absolute performance on this, the wider the capper axles and the custom 2-2 tires, that was my next step. That was my next step for absolute performance upgrades and to get out of the truck were those next few steps so that's the route we went with hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button subscribe to the channel down below if you haven't already um, any comments suggestions anything like that as always put them down below um, until next time everyone have a great one and crawl on